Join Lore Keeper Andy in a quest so grand. Exploring Bit Heroes, all the lore at hand. From dungeons deep to bosses tall, the floor keeper Andy. Greetings, adventurers. I am Lore Keeper Andy, and I have set forth on a grand quest to uncover and document the hidden lore of the Bitverse. My journey begins in the land of Bit Valley, a place filled with dungeons, forests, and the most curious creatures. Join me as I explore this mysterious realm, facing formidable foes and unraveling ancient secrets. I found myself in a town where an old man wearing an eye patch came up to me, named Gramps, and he caught my attention. He looked at me with curiosity and said, Erm, hey you, haven't seen you around here before. You new to this area? I met him with silence. Don't talk much, do ya? Ah, uh, well that's all right. I'll do enough talking for the both of us. I reckon if you want some respect around here, you'll have to prove yourself first. Do me a favor, will ya? Take care of that pesky tubbo lurking nearby. He's been a real pain in me bum. And with this request from Gramps, I set off on my adventure, ready to face any challenges that lay ahead. I approached Tubbo's lair. Entering the dark, damp corridors of this forgotten dungeon, I prepared myself for the first challenge, finding and defeating Tubbo. The dungeon was filled with ragged carpets, cracked stones, and flickering torches, casting eerie shadows on the walls. As I ventured deeper, I encountered small, annoying bats and ghosts fluttering around. These creatures seemed harmless, but were quite persistent. Finally, I came face to face with Tubbo, the large green ogre. He roared, Me Tubbo, me smash yo face. I couldn't help but think of Tubbo as a flubby wubby Tubbo, tubbiest Tubbo there ever was. And with determination, I fought Tubbo, dodging his heavy blows and delivering swift attacks until he was defeated. Standing over this fallen enemy, I pondered. How long had Tubbo been down here? And why? Do the other creatures in this dungeon follow his lead? Or is he merely a guardian of something far more sinister? I ventured further into Bit Valley and came across Boo Boo Crypt. It was eerily similar to Tubbo's lair. Here, I faced the ghostly Boo Boo as I engaged in battle, Boo Boo's haunting wails filled the air. I met them with silence once again. Boo Boo wailed even harder. Boo Boo, with his teal ghostly form, struck me as the cutest little ghost there ever was. However, after fierce battles, I had defeated the King Boo Boo in Boo Boo Crypt. I wondered to myself, what is the significance of King Boo Boo's Crypt? Was he a ruler of this area? Does King Boo Boo have a tragic backstory that tied him eternally to this crypt? And I also wondered, are the other Boo Boos that I ran into his followers or his creations? I didn't have time to think, as there was enemies to be slain. My path led me to the ruins of a once great tower, now fallen and decayed. I stood in front of the fallen tower. Here I battled familiar faces. More tubbos, more boo-boos, and of course, more baddies. 
The tower's history intrigued me as I fought these foes, each one reminding me of my earlier encounters. How did this tower fall? Why are Tubbo, Boo Boo, and Batty found here as well? Are they seeking something in these ruins? Or perhaps hiding from a greater threat? After clearing the Fallen Tower, I made my way to a much larger dungeon. The first dungeon I would face on my adventure, Grim's Crossing. Grim's Crossing was a place of dark magic and eerie silence. Here I faced the gibberish speaking Gabi, who muttered, This goblin like creature seemed to be a harbinger of something much more sinister. As I delved deeper, I encountered Grimm's, the Reaper of Bit Valley. With a chilling voice, Grimm's declared, Not even death can save you from me. His appearance, a floating figure in black robes with a skull for a face. After a hard fought battle, I defeated Grimm's. Once I had a moment to rest, I thought back to my encounter with Gabi. I wondered what cryptic language he was speaking and where he got all that loot from. Alas, this wouldn't be my last time seeing the creature. Leaving the ruins behind, I entered a strange forest known as Bob Forest. Here I encountered many Bobs. Bob is a simple green blob that bounced around aimlessly. Bob's simplicity made me think, this is Bob. Bob is simple. Bob is Bob. I couldn't help but think, why was there only Bob in this forest? Did he run all of the other creatures and animals out of this forest? Or perhaps he was being corralled here? Nevertheless, I had to push forward. Further into the forest, I came across Pallet Root. On Pallet Root, I ran into Professor Oak and his team, including Shrumps and Bobs. Professor Oak, the guardian of this forest, challenged me with a stern warning. Who dares go stomping through our forest? You better make like tree and get out of here. After a tough battle, I emerged victorious. I wondered why does Professor Oak protect this forest so fiercely? How did he and his team come to rule this area? And are Shrump and Bob allied with these Professor Oaks willingly or out of necessity? I couldn't help but wonder what secrets does this forest hold that these creatures are safeguarding. The deeper I went into the forest, the more I felt the presence of magic and ancient spirits. On Dryad Path, I faced enemies, Shrump, Bob, and Professor Oak again. They clearly had a deep connection to the forest itself. Following this path, I knew it was only a time until I ran into the Dryad himself. At the heart of the forest, the Dryad's heart. At the heart of the forest, I encountered my second dungeon on my journey, the Dryad's heart. Here, I encountered the Dryad himself, the spirit and protector of the woods. He accused me of unsettling the land and declared, I'm the spirit of the forest. You have unsettled our land. Prepare for battle. The Dryad's appearance with his green fur, fox-like features, and deer antlers made me realize he was indeed the forest's guardian. His abilities to heal and summon nature's wrath made the battle challenging, but I emerged victorious once again. I couldn't help but wonder, am I the evil one here? Have I truly unsettled the forest? What was the Dryad guarding here? Was it just nature? Or does something here maintain the balance in Bit Valley? Casting my guilt aside for unsettling nature, I moved forward. Finally emerging from the forest, 
I entered some decaying ruins. This place was filled with the remnants of a lost civilization. The eerie glow of green torches lit my way as I encountered a skeleto, a hunched over walking skeleton, and Krusty, a green skinned orc with an eye patch. They made for formidable foes. After defeating them, I pondered what they were doing in these ruins and what caused these ruins to decay. Perhaps these Eskeletos were a previous society living in this area that had now fallen to ruin. What other secrets lie hidden in this decay and rubble? I came across more ruins. This time I was at Merlan's vault. In the depth of these ruins, I found Merlan the Great, a trickster who guarded his vault with a mix of magic and mischief. He seemed surprised by my presence, exclaiming, Erm, uh huh, uh huh, what? Merlin, with his green skin, purple robe, and glowing staff, he was the type who really likes to play tricks. But after a challenging battle, I defeated Merlin. Since this was Merlin's vault, I wondered what treasures or secrets did he guard in this vault? And how did he come to power in these ruins? My path now led me to a decrepit tomb, a place where the air was thick with death and decay. Here I faced more Eskeletos, Krustis, and Merlans, each battle revealing more about their connection to this tomb. Whose tomb was this? And why have these enemies gathered here? I pushed forward and came upon the third dungeon, Lord Cerulean's tomb. And in the deepest part of the tomb, I encountered Lord Cerulean, a silent yet powerful ghostly figure. His silence was eerie, and his presence commanded respect and fear. I noticed upon Lord Cerulean's teal ghostly head was a crown, and I couldn't help but notice that he was Lord of the Elves. Everything he sees is blue like him, inside and out. His powerful abilities made the battle intense, but I eventually overcame him. I wanted to know so much about Lord Cerulean's true story. Why did he remain silent? What was his connection to the elves and the other spirits in Bid Valley? I wondered if there was once a dispute between Lord Cerulean and King Boo Boo, as they are both ruling ghosts. My final challenge in Bit Valley was a horrifying place known as Grim Valley, a place where all of the enemies in the Bit Valley gathered. Each battle was a test of my strength and resolve, reminding me of the journey I had undertaken. But I conquered. Once I was standing over many slain enemies, I couldn't help but wonder what drew all of these enemies to Grim Valley. Is there a great, greater power uniting them? Did Grimm's truly bring back all these slain enemies to Grim Valley to try to take me down? I would have to push forward into the Bitverse and find out more. This is just the beginning of my adventure in Bit Heroes. With each step, I grow stronger, ready to face the unknown that lies ahead in Tier 2. Join me next time as I dial deeper into the world of Bit Heroes and tackle Winter Marsh. Okay, <laughs> so that was sort of a uh, fun narrative of the Bit Valley or Tier 1 in Bit Heroes. Um, I wanted to sort of construct um, almost like a storybook narrative for you guys, um, just taking you guys through all the flags and dungeons. But there is some things I wanted to discuss now afterwards. You know, some of the ties between familiars, some of the Easter eggs I think I found, and, and that kind of stuff. So one thing I uncovered, um, and you might know this if you have, you, you know, the fusion called Night Gabi. But Gabi is actually a very terrifying familiar to me. Um, kind of the things of nightmares. So when you look at Gabi and you pull up his familiar sheet here, you can see it says, the Gabi is coming. Um, now on its own, okay, creepy first off, but you know, whatever, Gabi's coming, you know, maybe he'll give me loot or whatever. But then, um, 
just in... And this is more of a recent new familiar to the game, known as Night Gobby. And Night Gobby has the exact same description. The Gobby is coming. And it is terrifying when you see Night Gobby. Um, you know, something clearly hatching out of a creepy egg in his backpack. You know, what I thought was gold and gems and loot in that bag is actually just a terrifying monster. Um, Gobby himself turns into a like, sort of a creepy, maniacal laughing monster. <laughs> so just a little bit of a Gobby lore drop um, that he is actually terrifying. Um, and it totally makes sense that he tries to fight you every time you run into him. Um, so I am now scared of Gobby. <laughs> One thing I also wanted to touch on in particular with Grimm's, uh, and especially Grimm's uh, description, it sort of describes him that, you know, death isn't so scary once Grimm's on your side. I would make the jump to say, this is an assumption, you know, an, an, an Andy lore assumption, that Grimm's is the reason that we are able to revive or respawn in Bit Heroes. Um, throughout all the dungeons, and there's also cases and examples like Seth the Salesman, um, who I won't get into much on this video. I'll have a lot of lore on Seth the Salesman later. But um, in dungeons, there's corpses of heroes that you can loot, and Seth the Salesman, we all know, had passed away. Um, sort of proving that death in the Bidverse exists, and so my theory is because we defeat Grimm's or maybe you persuade him to be on your team, um, that he actually do does us either a favor if you persuade him and he always brings you back to life, or maybe since you defeated him, he doesn't want you in his realm, he always just sends you back to the living realm. <laughs> I don't know, but that is a theory of mine. You know, he's the first dungeon. I think it might be literally impossible to lose before you beat Grimm's. Um, <laughs> feel free to prove me wrong, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that is one of my, my game theories. That is one of my lore theories. Um, a couple of Easter eggs, obviously Shrump is a call out to the real life Donald Trump. Um, you know, Shrump's description says, make this realm great again. Uh, Donald Trump says, make America great again. You know, not going to get political here, but I did want to call out that Easter egg. And then Professor Oak. So Professor Oak, and even the flag um, that you get introduced to him, Flag 5, is called Palette Root. Uh, if you guys grew up playing Pokemon, um, you know, Pokemon is a very, very big part of my childhood. I love Pokemon, and so I immediately noticed, you know, Palette Route, Professor Oak. Um, <laughs> and you can tell, even from his description, you know, it mentions, you know, this, re this uh, Professor Oak doesn't do any researching. Sorry, trainers. Uh, totally, totally, totally referencing Pokemon and especially Generation 1 where you begin your journey in Pallet Town and there's lots of routes you go on through the game and then Professor Oak is also there where you get your first, first Pokemon and so on. So awesome to see a little Easter egg or a little bit of a mention to Pokemon there. Another bit of a question um, that I would pose to you guys in the comments, Lord Cerulean. He has a unique dialogue that is simply dot 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 um and that is all we say as players ever is dot 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 um now he does follow it up with the exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark but i have been wondering is lord cerulean a ghost of one of the bit heroes you know was he basically a player um that was going through dungeons maybe died and is now a ghost you know as players we never say anything besides dot 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 so maybe you'd think exclamation marks are out of the question but it does raise the question and i i don't know it's it's hard to know for sure but it's an interesting theory i personally would lean towards saying he is not a player just because of the other lore around him you know he's got the crown he is lord cerulean he does have abilities like royal decree and king's rage and his description mentions him being Lord of the Elves. So I think that it's a little unlikely that he was meant to be portrayed as a player, but nevertheless, it is a, another lore theory. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about in tier one, guys, is some of the fusions. Um, I only want to talk about the fusions that you can get 
from only tier one familiars. And those are gonna be Booty, Bubbo, Borlan, and a Skeletrad. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, not too much lore develops when you see these four. Um, booty is a fusion between Boo Boo and Batty. Their description is the cutest little booty there ever was, which I think is kind of funny. <laughs> um, Bubbo is a fusion between Tubbo and Batty. And Borlan. Borlan, as you know, Borlan's super, super popular. You've probably heard of him, if not used him. Um, people recommend him religiously to new players, and I would as well. Great, great starter. Familiar for you guys. Um, but Borlan is a fusion between Merlan and Bob. And then a Skeletrad, and this is actually a pretty rare one. Um, I shouldn't say rare, it's, it's one you don't see too often. And that is a fusion between Dryad and a Skeleto. So. Reading their descriptions, you know, not too much stood out to me as uh, noteworthy, but nevertheless, I did want to cover them uh, in this video here. So yeah, that was the video for tier one, guys, or the Bit Valley. This is a very new type of video for me, so please let me know what you thought in the comments below. Um, let me know if you like this style of video or if you want more things broken down. Let me know your thoughts on some of the lore or if I missed anything in tier one, please let me know. I will of course be coming out with tier two or winter march soon in the future. So make sure you guys are subscribed to stay tuned for that. Thank you all so, so much for tuning in. I wanna give a huge shout out to my current channel members as well as my current channel stream boss. Thank you Jason Baker for supporting on the stream. And yeah, that's gonna be all. Stay tuned for more awesome content in the future. And until next time, take care and good luck with your grind.